Hey, Worship Leader, welcome back to the channel. Look what I got today. It is the Pirate MIDI Bridge 4. I also have the Bridge 6. It's right here, hooked up to the HX Stomp. You guys know if you've been around the channel, I've always been intrigued with MIDI, MIDI uh, because of the things you can do with it, specifically with the HX Stomp, which only has three foot switches. Uh, this is a great way to expand your HX Stomp. So what I thought I would do today is make a quick video sharing with you five things, the five first things I would do if I got a new MIDI controller, what I would do to expand the HX stop. So let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna dig in. Like I said, I'm gonna share with you the five first things that I would do if I had a MIDI controller like this. I'm gonna share with you some features that are unique to the Pirate MIDI units, and I'm also gonna share with you some uh, areas of improvement or things that I hope they fix in the future or things I've heard them say they are gonna fix in the future that will help take these things to the next level. Just to give you a brief history of how I got into MIDI, years ago I got the Jet Micro, and I always say that pedal is like the gateway to MIDI. It's made specifically for the HX Stomp, it's pre-programmed, and it looks like this. Now this is its bigger brother, I would say, the Jet MCX, which is a fully customizable MIDI controller, just like these and, and this one here. Uh, and I really love it because I'm into mini boards, and this is my mini HX Stomp mini board, mini MIDI board and uh, it's black and I, I love it. There are other really good MIDI controllers out there that I've heard of but I don't have any experience with yet. We have the Morningstar MIDI controllers and also there is the uh, the Futurist by Matthew Effects which looks pretty awesome as well. I would love to get my hands on those and kind of do like a big shootout but right now all the, the only experience I have is with the Jet MIDI controller and now the Pirate MIDI controllers. So the first things I wanted to do is try to mimic what I already do with the Jet MCX and see how easy it is. I wanna give you a close up of how I'm actually pressing the buttons and show you exactly what I'm doing so you can know what to expect in case you're in the market for any of these controllers. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is scroll through snapshots. I utilize snapshots all the time. It's a great way to expand the HX Stomp. It's a good way to get different sounds and still be able to have spillover. You can even do something I've been doing lately which is a song per snapshot rather than a song per preset. A lot of the complaints are that there's, a, there's an audible drop out when you go from preset to preset, but not if you go to snapshot to snapshot. So if you're more simple like me and you just need a few different sounds, I like to use my Jet MCX to scroll through snapshots and have these foot switches on the stomp itself uh, be in stomp mode so I can still manipulate things and go from song to song and still have spillover. So that's what I wanna do. So let's do that on the bridge six here. Let's figure out how to scroll through snapshots. So the first thing we need to know is how to get to the menu and on the bridge six, you hold down foot switch one and four and that brings you to the main menu. On the bridge six, you use foot switch one and three to scroll through the different menu options, which is the same on the four you would scroll using one and two. The only difference is to select something. So let's go to uh, switches. I would select using two, which is here in the middle and on the bridge four that doesn't have a middle switch, you actually select hitting both of them. So to pull up snapshots, you need to send a CC message of 69. One option is to call up snapshots one, two, three with these three different foot switches. You would send a CC message of 69 with a message of zero, one, and two to call up one, two, and three snapshots. But let me go back out here. You just hold foot switch four. But the way I wanna do it is have this foot switch one here be snapshot up. And we'll just go ahead on foot switch four and do snapshot down. That way I can scroll uh, either way. Now on a device like this, I only have three snapshots, so I could just use one foot switch, but I wanted to show you how to do it. So what we're going to do is send a CC message of 69 and give it a value of eight to scroll up through our snapshot. So let's hold foot switch one and four at the same time. We will go to foot switches. We're gonna do foot switch one. We're gonna go over to messages, select. We're gonna go over to press and select. Now you can actually see that my, my MIDI message is already in here. I can add a new message, I can delete this message, or I can edit this message. Let me edit it so I can show you what it would be like if I was setting it up for the first time. Right here we have types of messages. We wanna send a control change message. Uh, you can scroll through here to change it to different types of messages. So control change, channel four, because right here on the HX Stomp, if I go to global settings, you can see that my MIDI channel is channel four. So I wanna send it to channel four. We want a CC number of 69. I'm gonna use these two arrows here to, to navigate through the menu. 
69 if I wanted to switch it to 68 or a different number I would just use these but we're on a 69 and a value of 8 if you look in the manual will scroll up through the presets so right here I have a value of 8 there's also another menu behind these four options if I click this arrow here you have flexi 1 and 2 the regular 5 pin MIDI and the USB I usually just go through and turn all these on we'll get to that in a second if I scroll over again it takes me back to the first half of the menu if I like what I have, I push save and then I'm done. Now I'm still in the menu. Before any of this will work, I have to hold foot switch four to get me back out to the main menu. There it is. I've done the same thing for foot switch four, but instead of sending a CC69 value eight, I sent a CC69 value nine to scroll the other way. So if we see here on the screen, we have a snapshot. We're on snapshot one. I push this, it goes to snapshot two and snapshot three. And if I push switch four, it goes back to two, one, and you can see it just scrolls through the snapshots. All right, cool, we've done our snapshots. The next thing I wanna do is do the same thing with presets. I wanna be able to get to another preset if I want, and so I wanna preset up and down. Now to preset up and down, in the past you had to emulate foot switches four and five and do something kinda of different, but if you don't know, and this is not in the manual, sending a CC message of 72 will actually send a preset up and down as well. So what I wanna do is I want preset down to be my foot switch five and preset up to be my uh, foot switch two. Now that might seem backwards to you that this is down and this is up, but that's how my brain works with HX Edit. As you are going up through your presets, you're actually going down the list. And so my brain thinks this is going up through my presets. If that's weird to you, I'm sorry, but that's how I would set it up. So let's see what we got in here. I'm going to hold those again. Go over to switches, foot switch two, select, go over to messages, go over to press, and you can see my preset in here. I have a control change, sending it to channel four, a CC number of 72 with a value of 127, goes up presets. Over here, I just wanna make sure that all of my uh, ports are on, and then I'm done. If I go back up to foot switch five, same thing, go over to messages, press, and I have the same setup here, channel four, 72 with a value of zero to scroll down through the presets. So now you can see here, if I hit this, it goes down the preset list, 70, 69, uh, and I can go back up using the up preset switch. All right, we got our snapshot up and down and we got a preset up and down. The next thing I would wanna do is be able to access my tuner. Now the tuner's pretty easy. All we gotta do is send the HX stomp a CC message of 68 and it'll toggle on and off the tuner. Let's do it. All right, so we're just gonna hold foot switch one and four to get to our main menu. Go over to foot switches. We want foot switch six, and we want to send a message, a press message, and there it is. It's a control change, channel four, uh, a CC number of 68, and I have a value of 64. I think any value will work. Um, so let's just hold foot switch four to go out. You can see here, hitting my tuner, the screen, it pulls the tuner up and hit it again, and you're back in business that easy now you can see here that i have some of these things labeled i had our snap down snap up preset down preset up tuner and this one's not labeled yet because i'm going to show you how to label that in just a second but what we want here is we have everything we need now we need our tap tempo a tap tempo is simply a cc message of 64 going to the hx stomp so let's do that we'll hold down foot switch four and one again we'll go over to foot switches foot switch three Go over to messages, we will go over to press, and there is our message. It is a control change, channel four, a CC number of 64, a value of 127. I think the message just has to be between 64 and 127. Make sure everything is on and save it. Now what I've done here is I put my foot switch three on the HX stomp to show you the light so you can actually see the changing. I'll also share my screen with you so you can see it changing. So right now we have um, a BPM of 121. If I hit this, you can see it changing. We're at 82.7. If I go really slow, you can see the light is slowing down and we're at 64. Now I do wanna mention something here. I have some pros and cons to talk through. I'm gonna go ahead and mention one now, is that if you use a foot switch on the Pirate MIDI to control um, your BPM, you can only go so fast. I think I got up to like 140 something one time. Right now I'm struggling to get above 100. 
107. There's 126. I think the reason is, is because a feature that is always on is a double press action and the Pirate MIDI is getting confused if you want a fast BPM or there I got 131. If you want a fast BPM or if you're trying to send a double press message on this particular foot switch. And so if it were me, I actually wouldn't use a foot switch over here to send my BPM. I would actually just use it on the stomp since I have multiple switches. This one is clearly seen and then you have no, no problems getting a, a faster tempo because this is not looking for a double press. Now, if you hate the thought of having your foot switch three on the stomp B tap tempo and you don't want to do that, there's actually a really good solution. Um, the, the pirate bridges can also send MIDI clock. I'm not going to cover that in this video. We'll save that for another video, but what you can do is you can just set up it can constantly be sending a BPM and you can change that based on what bank you're on and it's, it's pretty pretty cool so even though the press action is kind of funky right now hopefully they'll make an update where you can turn off double press that way it's not looking for a double press and that would probably solve it but there's also the MIDI clock thing we'll look at that in a different video but the last thing I want to show you is that if you did put your foot switch 3 on the stomp as tap tempo you might want to just have your other foot switch on the bridge just toggle on and off an effect on your HX stomp. So what I mean by that is I like having all three switches here to be in stomp mode, but if foot switch three is gonna be tap tempo, then you might just wanna send a CC message for one of these to toggle on and off an effect on your preset. So down here on bank 99, let's go ahead and do that. If you look on the screen here, um, I have my Scream 808 toggling on and off here on the, the stomp, but I'm also went down here to bypass and pulled my MIDI up here. And you can actually select any CC message that you wanna send um, to toggle it on and off. So let's just leave it on CC10, and then we'll pull up a CC10 toggle on and toggle off to toggle on and toggle off our effect. So we actually have to send two different messages. Let's do that. Let's hold down foot switch one and four. We'll go over to foot switch one, select it, go over to messages, we'll go to toggle on. So here it is, I have a control change, CC message sending to channel four, which is the stomp. Right now it's at 127. Let's change that to our CC 10. So let's edit it. We'll go over here. And this is one of the features I wanted to talk about is I'm, they now included a fast scroll, which is a lot better than it was before. Um, the first update did not have this fast scroll. You had to sit there and actually push the button a bunch of times. So anyways, now we're sending a CC um, number 10 a value of 127 to toggle on. All of our ports are on, so we will save that. Now we want to go back and do messages on foot switch one to toggle off. So we'll go to messages, we're gonna to go to toggle off. And here's my uh, message again, we wanna edit it and actually take this back down to 10. You can go this direction and it's a lot quicker, but I just wanted to show you the speed scroll and a value of zero to toggle off. Make sure our ports are on, save it, go back to the home screen, and now foot switch one should toggle on and off our overdrive. There it is, it's working. So as you saw there, I actually had to send two different messages. I had to toggle on and toggle off. I'm not a programmer, I don't understand. I, I thought maybe you could just send a toggle message, which would just automatically toggle on and toggle off and just send one message. Like if you toggled it, it would send a CC of zero. Toggled again, it would automatically send a CC of 127. I don't understand why the toggle on, toggle off, because it seems like if you're toggling, you're toggling. But anyways, maybe somebody can answer that down in the comments. But right now, if you want to toggle on, toggle off, you got to send both of those messages. All right, so that's our five things. We did the uh, snapshot up and down, preset up and down, um, tap tempo, tuner, and just sending a CC message. So now I want to talk through some of the features, and we already mentioned one of them. It was the fast scroll, which is a huge blessing. Uh, the second thing is, uh, the cool thing about these is the lights, and there's actually two sets of lights per switch. Yeah, so these lights are pretty cool. They got these little, like, almost like smiley face bent to them, and one side will be one color. It's the primary side on the left, the secondary side on the light, on the right. Uh, let me show you how to change those. You go back to the menu by holding foot switch one and foot switch four. LEDs, select. Let's go to uh, foot switch six. Select the primary color or the secondary color. Right now the primary color is coral. And we can change from coral, aqua, yellow, green, white, red, blue, and back to coral. So if I wanted to change it, um, let's make it, let's do, let's do Christmas. We'll do green 
and then I go to my secondary, we'll select it, and then we'll go to red. And there it is. So now we have red and green. Might be kind of hard to see on the camera here, but it's very vibrant here in the room. What's cool about this, the reason you might want to have two lights is say you were sending MIDI clock like I was saying, you can have that secondary light flashing, just like uh, our Foot Switch 3 over here is flashing, you can have that flashing the BPM and then have your primary or e the other color you're not using toggle on and off whatever it's toggling on and off. So each button can, can demonstrate two different functions, which is pretty cool. You hold these two to bank up and let me show you how to um, change the name of one of our foot switches. So right here, I was going to show you, I was just gonna label this tap. So let's do that together. Go to our menu. Go to our switches, switch three, messages, no, switch name. Right here we just have letters that we need to scroll through. Makes it a lot faster now that we have the fast scroll, but an editor would be even better just to be able to type this in. Um, but let's do tap, so we're on G, let's go up to T. While I'm here, let me show you something. You have an arrow this way, you have an arrow in the middle this direction, and then four here is to exit. For some reason in my mind, I always feel like this is forward and, and this is backwards, and I'll X out of my menu and, and not <laughs> remember why I'm doing what I'm doing. It gets even more confusing on the bridge four because you have this direction, and this button here is actually your back out of the menu. You actually have to double press for the left option, and it's even more confusing and not intuitive to me on the bridge four, but that's just something worth noting. All right, we have our T, we're saying tap here, so it's from S, go down to A. That's pretty quick. Tap, and then I'm guessing there's a uh, empty message somewhere. I don't know where it is. There. Yeah. Save. Channel save. So we'll exit. And now it says tap. So another feature that I want to share with you and I've mentioned a few times are these flexi ports. So they're labeled here on the top. Flexi 1 and 2. Um, they're just the uh, TRS output. The bridge 4 here has MIDI in and out via the, the smaller 8th inch, eighth inch TRS jack. On the bridge six, we have the two flexi pores. We also have MIDI in and MIDI out via the five pin and another TRS jack full size. Those flexi ports are cool because you can assign them to do a bunch of different things. The only thing to remember, things to remember is that with the flexi ports, since you have all those options, you need to remember to set them to do what you want them to do. So for me, all I want them to do is send MIDI out because I'm just sending MIDI out to all my different pedals. But there was a time where I thought my units weren't working when I did a factory reset and uh, I reached out to the guys and I'm like, oh yeah, you gotta tell the flexi ports again what to do when you have to do a factory reset, which uh, there's been two updates now. The first update, you had to do a full factory reset. The second update, you don't have to. But if you're just getting these, you're gonna have to do the whole factory reset thing and then don't forget to tell your flexi ports what you want them to do. Let me show you how to do that real quick. If you hold down R1 and 2 to go to the menu, scroll over to global, you can do things with the switches on global. You can uh, here select your flexi ports, and right now select the mode. Mine is MIDI out. That's what I wanted to do. Um, but you can have them do other things as well. But you need to make sure they're MIDI out if you want to do the things I showed you today. So let me end here with the two things that I'm waiting on to improve and things they've actually talked about, and that is. Uh, maybe taking away the double tap feature so that we can have a faster tap tempo. As you saw, I could only get up to like 130 if I was lucky with the tap tempo. And, and you know, sometimes you might wanna have a BPM of 150 or something and that was that's kinda hard because the unit is trying to detect if you're tapping fast or if it's a double tap press option. So anyway, so that's something that might could be fixed. And then the other big thing would be like a web editor or a mobile app or something. I've heard they're working on it. 
who knows how quick it'll be. You know, it takes a long time to get this stuff up and running, but I think that'll be another layer of being able to visually see and type in things and not have to scroll through and do the buttons and all that stuff. Other than that, I'm pretty excited about these. I like the idea of MIDI. It's a lot of work up front so that things are easier later, like when you're on stage and you're leading. And so there's a lot of things you can do with MIDI. You can have your HX Stomp send messages over to Ableton or have Ableton control your HX Stomp or Helix. And as a worship leader who is often singing and playing a lot, I don't like <coughs> <coughs> coughing, still getting over COVID. I don't like having to do a lot of stepping and stomping when I'm trying to focus on leading the people. And so MIDI is definitely one of those ways where you can pre-program a bunch of things to work for you instead of against you. All right, before we leave, I want to give you something for free. If you're an HX Stomp, Helix, PodGo player, I have a free Tone Secrets PDF guide. It's a, a very visual walkthrough of some of the tone secrets that I use on a regular basis to get great tone every week. So if you want that, click the link in the description. It's my free gift to you. If you enjoyed today's video, let me know by liking, comment down below what's your favorite thing, what you're most excited about, about MIDI controllers, whether it's the, the pirate stuff or another brand. And also, if you are a uh, pirate MIDI person, let me know down in the comments what you want me to cover next. I mentioned covering the uh, MIDI clock. What else do you want to see? I'll try to figure it out and make a video about it. I have a giveaway going on right now, I think. I don't think it's over. It's a pretty short giveaway, and I'm making this video in advance. So I don't remember, but I'm giving away the Flamma FS606, FS07, and a pedal board. So if that giveaway is not over, click the link in the description, go sign up. If it is over, subscribe to the channel because I have another giveaway coming up really soon. So anyways, that's all I got for today. Have a great week. See you in the next video. Bye.